Europe's strongest man. Please welcome out Luke Stolberg! And oh, is of course his wee brother, the world's strongest man, Tom Stoltman! <laughs> Take us back, Tom, because you know you've had just an, an unbelievable rise. You are the strongest man in the world. You're, you're the, the king of strength right now. I think lots of people know that I was diagnosed with autism at a young age and you know, you know, being diagnosed with autism at such a young age, you know, as a kid, you're off this label and you know, it's a very, very, very kind of hard thing to do. You know, you've got four other siblings that are basically normal and I'm here with a disability getting extra support. I don't remember too much before my teenage years, it's a nightmare. Since I was born, football was my only sport that I ever wanted to do. I wanted to be a professional footballer. You know, I just wanted to travel the world playing football. I never had any interest in the strongman, the gym stuff. I kind of watched it on the TV, but I like like the Marius Puskonovskis and the Derek Poundstones, the guys that look like the Greek gods and had abs, not the ones like us now, the chubby kind of ones. Though. <laughs> so yeah, that was kind of, you know, the Flex magazines, all that kind of stuff is what uh, kind of inspired me a wee bit as well. And then obviously, you know, like the autism, going through school again, uh, I had like different troubles in Luke, I um, was just in and out of school all the time, maybe left school at like 15, 16 years old and just didn't really see my life going anywhere, you know, I might have gone into care, I might have gone down the r a r wrong roads, but uh, the support of my mum and dad, support of Luke, my other sisters, my wee brother, it's, uh, you know, changed my life big time, and then at 16 years old, when I kind of was on the last kind of road, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do, Luke told me to come to the gym with me, and uh, I, that's, that was still a bit hard, you know, I went into the gym, there was like, mirrors, people, I hated people, I couldn't talk, head down, the only person I would talk to in the gym was Luke, so that was a very, very uncomfortable moment for me, but the thing at 16 years old was I didn't quit, and that's what I usually done before that, you know, was quit all the sports that I got uncomfortable with, so I just kept going, and then I went and watched Luke at his first Scotland Strongest Man, and that's when I was like, wow, my brother can lift cars, my brother can lift logs, this is like a real life superhero and he's my brother, so why don't I do that? So I joined the gym, 17 years old, and then, like I said, the gym saved my life, the gym changed my life, it helped me out big time. Everyone's just been so supportive. Physically, I was strong maybe three or four years ago, but mentally, I had to get my head screwed on, and that's what I've done, you know, the support of Luke, my wife, Sinead, my family, everyone. So it's been a kind of rocky road, but I mean, I would never change it for the world, you know, competing with my brother now, being well, I can say the best in the world, and then obviously Luke being Europe's strongest man, it's a journey that I think only brothers can dream of, and I, I never thought 10 years ago I'd be sitting here, you know, traveling the world with Luke, and I, like, inspiring people with autism to kind of go out there and believe they've got superpowers and they're the best at what they can do. A lot of oil rig gyms, you have a treadmill, you have some dumbbells, and maybe if you're lucky, you have a power rack. Um, and I'm, I don't like to make excuses, so for me, I used to train twice a day. I used to wake up at half four in the morning, do my cardio in the morning, and then I do my weight training in the evening after we did a 14 hour shift. Um, so yeah, I was doing more bodybuilding esque training. Uh, my physique probably resembled, certainly back then, more of a bodybuilder. Um, but then I really fell in that love of strength. The reason why I went professional last year as well was I didn't want to be one of those guys that look back in 10 years saying, I'm still working offshore, but I could have been the world's strongest man. You actually said to me in the Philippines, part-time training equals part-time results, full-time training, full-time results. So since I went full-time, since I had that self-belief, since I had that courage to take that chance and that opportunities that was given to me, I've never looked back and it's been the single most best decision of my life. I mean, I'm sitting here with Tom, my baby brother, the world's strongest man, first Scotsman to win world's strongest man. I'm Europe's strongest man, I just won uh, Glasgow, the first show in Scotland. It's incredible and I, I, 
implore and encourage anyone out there listening to this just to take that opportunity, take that chance. If you're not happy in doing what you're doing, change. Because I, I spent 16 years offshore on the oil rigs. It affected my mental health. I wasn't happy. It affected relationships. It affected my home life. And that's not okay. You know, you need to take responsibility. And that's what I did. I made that decision. Maybe it was the right time, um, but I had to make that decision and here we are getting to talk to you amazing people. It's just, life is absolutely insane. It's, yeah, great. No, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's never too late to change, I guess, is the, the what well, you take away from that one. And, um, yeah, life is there for the taking. You've got to, but it uh, only comes you know, it's, it's amazing how these wonderful things are really disguised as it's lots of hard work. Yeah. And that's the truth. And something I can see Tom has particular, um, particularly happy with is digging in and getting the hard work done. And, and, and do you find that, um, I, I don't know that much about autism, but is it something that you, you can really channel your energy into something? Is that, is that something that, what, what are the, the downsides and upsides if, if you were to read a textbook on, on autism? What, 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 tell us a little bit about it. There's ups and downs of having autism with the kind of straw man, but uh, for me it's tunnel vision. So like when you go into a sport, you're kind of OCD with it. So everything needs to be perfect. I write everything down. I never kind of miss a meal. I never miss a training session just because it's clockwork in my head but then obviously the kind of negative aspects of things is if certain changes or a lot of kind of crowds in a big stadium I need to go out a bit earlier and get you know used to that before I can kind of get my head into it but I mean it's just those things I've learned to deal with it now but yeah I mean if you, you're not used to it it's pretty intimidating at the start you know for me it was very intimidating mentally more than physically but uh, yeah it's just those kind of wee, wee bits there's still wee bits now you know I'm training and maybe you know, my coach might go, oh, instead of deadlifting Monday or deadlifting Friday, and that can trigger me a wee bit, but I just get used to it now, you know, so it's, uh, I mean, I've gone through a lot of hurdles in my life, like I said, and uh, changing a day in training or changing this and that is not, not too big now, so. It's, 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 it's very good to know, because we work with you guys all the time. Do you actually help get support from anywhere else, or do you think that's maybe one of the reasons why you've done so well, is you have each other to help each other, you can look out for each other, maybe. Yeah, 100%, I mean, obviously Luke's my older brother, so he's gonna support me, and I'm gonna support him. Yeah, like, for me, my head goes for things that it shouldn't go to, for example, the food thing, you know, if I miss a meal, that'll play on my head for a while and affect my day, whereas, you know, if Luke missed a meal, he could probably shrug it off for a bit, but, yeah, we, we support each other, I think that's why we were kind of so dominant, you know, obviously, like, at Worlds, and obviously Luke at Europe's and, and Glasgow and stuff, that, we thrive off each other's energy, and uh, we use that to kind of we use that as positivity around us, and maybe scare the other athletes a wee bit. But at the end of the day, we're always going to travel. You know, it's like when you win big competitions, you have to be prepped for. Like you know, when we're traveling down here, we had our meals. We knew that this was going to be a busy day today, so you just plan ahead. And if you don't kind of plan ahead, then it all goes downhill. But that's kind of on your your kind of shoulders there. But yeah, we're professional athletes at the end of the day now as well. So you're always planning ahead to make sure you're 100% every kind of day and every hour as well, so. so I mean, I'm, I'm a believer in the fact that with one without the other, you guys, would it be fair to say you wouldn't be the same? I mean, I think Luke was there on the scene already, and then little brother came along who was this titan, and Luke, you know, I, I can remember for a while joking with Luke saying, you know, you're just going to end up being his bag carrier, big guy. You know? <laughs> but it never bothered you. You, you, would, you would smile with pride and say, well, if that's what I'm going to be, I'm happy. He's my brother, you know, and uh, he then dragged your standard up. And now you would argue who's number one in the world. You know, it's a difficult question. So you've got a wry smile on your face. You know? <laughs> I want the title of Salty at number one for him <laughs> <laughs> See if I can get them to fall out here. <laughs> First time ever, well done, Colin. Yeah, the, the next boxing match. Yeah. <laughs> without Tom, there wouldn't be a me, and without me, there wouldn't be a Tom. We, as Tom says, said before, we thrive off each other now. We, we're a, like when we walk into a competition now, I really feel there's a force, like with Tom and I, that other athletes can see. Out in Worlds, that was the first time 
I think it was really shown that we are we are a force together. You know, if we can focus and be that stolt men, you know, rather than that stolt man, you know, we're together and and kind of thrive off each other. I mean, I've got the privilege now. Tom is the world's strongest man. There's no question about it. Um, what happens next year? Tom's got to come back and defend the title. But this year, Tom's the best in the world at what we do. So I have the, the privilege, the honour of training with someone who has won the most prestigious title in our sport. And I mean, I'm in awe of that. You know, that title is, that's winning a gold medal in the Olympics, uh, World Cup, whatever else it is. It's just, it's just amazing. So for me to be training with Tom every day, it's incredible. So he's inspiring me every day to be better. And I hope that I do the same for Tom. You know, we've, we've got a good combination now where we're not only athletes now, we've got the business side of things that we have to do. So Tom's learning every day in the business side of things. That's another skill set that Tom's taken on. I'm learning how to be the world's strongest man for next year. That's something I'm taking on. Um, but yeah, we, we are a team, you know, and I think it works so well because Tom is my baby brother. He is 10 years younger than me. I have that protective nature, I think, for Tom. And I needed Tom to win World's Strongest Man. Then I can say, right, well, Tom doesn't need my help. Tom's the strongest man in the world. Why would he need my help? So I can go off and do my own thing and um, still have that, that brother aspect, that stoltman force. But I need to go off and be my own athlete, just as Tom does. So we're there to beat each other, but then support each other at the same time. Do you have weaknesses though? What are your weaknesses that you worry about if you're going into a contest? I mean, uh, well, strong as man, there was a lot of my weaknesses before going into that. Obviously, that kind of turntable thing, you know, it's the mind I couldn't get past the pain, the pain barrier. So whenever my legs gave way, I would just quit. Obviously, the frame kind of carries and uh, that kind of stuff as well. So all the kind of grip stuff was my kind of weakness ones, but. Uh, I worked hard for it and obviously, I, you know, I, well, I don't know if I can say the results or not, but I did good in them events, so, and that was my main ones, but for me it's the grip stuff and, yeah, maybe my hurt leaves, but all the other grip stuff, I'm alright, I mean, the Nicholas Stones are decent at Glasgow, Farmers and good, but it's just uh, the hurt leaves are mine, but I'm getting better and better then, but hopefully they'll stay out of the world for a bit longer, so. <laughs> but if you're going into a contest, who do you know is always going to be there punishing you? Yeah, Alexei, Alexei Novikov, he's... Alexei and I have gone, grown really close over the last half a year, year or so, and for me he's, he's probably the most intelligent strong man there at the moment. Um, he analyses things very nicely, very well. Um, so he's, he's never worried about an event, he knows what he's going to do every time, and he's, he's, like you say, he's like the Terminator, he's just such a great athlete. And now we've got obviously Matthias, he's coming back. Martins is coming back as well, which will be great. Yeah, next year's World Strongest Man is going to be a riot. It's going to be insane. You've got still Brian Shaw, Evan Singleton's looking really good at the moment as well. The, the, the level of strength is just insane. I think this is, for me, <clears throat> since I've been competing, I think it's the most exciting time, as in you can't pick a a real winner. You know, even Tom, though Tom's world's strongest man, Alexis won it last year, you can't go out and pick an out and right, out right winner when you could have done with like Zadrinis or Brian um, or Thor when he was there or Eddie. Now it's just, it just comes down to the day. You know, uh, a slip up on the stones, uh, I don't know, uh, like Alexi in Europe, he didn't do so well in the shield carry. Little things like that really cost you and if you can just be consistent through the whole the whole competition you're going to win but I, I can't choose there's that many good guys now it's the top 10 in the world are genuinely the top 10 strongest men in the world you can't argue that fact so it's it's exciting I'm just so happy to be part of this mental world that is strong man it's absolutely insane if it comes down to it next year and let's say you're a point or two in the lead and it's head to head in stones. Can you see off your brother? If you absolutely had to? 100%, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. 
you can do a lot. But let me ask you, you re- in, in the stones, could you be your runner? And if, if I'm two points ahead of Tom in stones, ah. I don't need to win stones. Ah. Intelligent strong man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where do you see your deadlift going? Because I mean, you're, for me, I'm, your deadlift streamed right up, but then you, you haven't really been pushed enough in it recently, I think. I personally can see you going a lot, a lot higher. Where, where, where are you at at the moment? Uh, well, I bought a suit, so uh, if you can't beat them, join them. So uh, I think I'll be over the 500 club soon now, because the suits uh, put a lot of weight on your deadlifts, 100%. Do you think it you. makes a big difference? Yeah, 100%, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, 100%. How much do you think a suit adds to your, de- uh, to your deadlift? Maybe 20, 25k or something. As much as that? Yeah, maybe for me anyway. Um, I just was going to sneeze. Uh, Why was the war big enough? No, I'm good, no, no. So, yes, yeah, so we lost mum to cancer, unfortunately, but we had uh, three years that when mum got diagnosed with terminal cancer, we got told. We we're going to have six months with her, which was heartbreaking. She, she should be up here speaking to you guys about what it takes to inspire, you know, everything. She was the reason why. Certainly, I'm here. Um, she showed strength. Um, like I can't even explain to you the strength that she showed. So the pain, the suffering, everything. What she went through is real pain, and I've said it before. What what Tom and I do isn't pain. It's just temporary. You know, we can get up and walk five minutes after. Mum, when she was going through her, her treatment, her, her kind of, you know, that terrible disease that kills so many, that was pain. You know, that was never ending pain. It just went from being painful to more pain, more pain, more pain, more pain. And she's the, the shining light of our family, or she was. And, and yeah, we do all this now for man. That's why we have sunflowers all over our arms. Um, Tom looks up to the sky every time he wins a competition, and um, that's the reason. What, what are the sunflowers? Is it your mum? So that's that's my that's a tattoo of mum. So that's mum in the garden. Uh, that's a sunflower, sunflower, sunflower. That's of dad. Um, dad's still with us. Um, but yeah, mum, she was the definition of strength and the true inspiration. So. Because she passed away, she inspired us to change, I think, and just to take note of what is important in life. You know, you lose someone that's the the epitome of your life. She was the son, she was our son in life. And losing her, um, I really struggled with that, still do. But it, it gave me a reason why I, I have to succeed in life. You know, that's my why, that's my reason in life. Um, and she, I still have that relationship with her to this day, she inspires me. Um, and then, you know, Dad, seeing how proud Dad is, I mean, having two boys that are competing in strongman school, but then having a son that was diagnosed with autism, was told that he wouldn't amount to anything, and now to be the world's strongest man, I think that's just absolutely mind-blowing. And, um, yeah. Never ever listen to that negativity you get in your life and uh, have a really, really kind of small but trustworthy support system. And uh, for me, you know, I've always said it is autism autism is a superpower, it's not a label. And if you can use it as a superpower in your job and your sport, whatever, in your life, then you're going to go far. And you know, it used to, I used to think it was a label, I changed it to being a superpower. And now look at me, you know, I live every day. Uh, to the fullest and I, I love being you know autistic and I love just being myself and that's why I never hide it I'm so open about it but yeah you know can I have a good support system and use autism as your superpower 100% you know? yeah. just being yourself and I've been this. That's... what do you see for the future for you guys first of all are you gonna win World Strongest Man then let me ask is that the, f- the next short-term goal 100% that's that's all I'm thinking about at the moment is World Strongest Man 2022. Um, if, if any of you guys could get in my head to see how much I think about it, you'd tell me I'm insane. It's like literally every every minute of the day, that's all I'm thinking about at the moment. And that's really driving me to, yeah, to be 
the strongest I can. But the the long term goals, yeah, that's that's scary what we're thinking. You know, we're we're saying you see the likes of Ben Francis for Jim Shark, you know, an incredible young man, such a successful business, absolutely insane work ethic. So I'm like, well, why can't we be that? Why can't we have a billion pound company? Why can't we be the next Jim Shark? Why can't we be whatever we want to be? Because that's our vision, or my vision especially, I think Tom shares the same, is that there is no vision. It's it's infinity, you know, it's infinite, our, our business, our goals. First of all, we need to win World Strongest Man again next year. That's the priority, but after that, that's the, the is, goal. Is that two for Tom? And no, I'm just telling him. I'm just telling him I need to win. I'm sorry, um, <laughs> but yeah, then it's it's. So what win, for me, what winning world's strongest man would do is give us a platform. So we we speak to psychologists and we talk about templates and stuff. So so we have a lot of issues in Scotland with mental health. So the mental health in Scotland and, and in the UK, it's a crisis. It's absolutely horrendous what what people have to go through and. I've suffered from it, I, I guess a lot of you guys have as well, but what we would like to do as people with a bigger platform, people with a business, is really try and do something, because yeah, the government can give money, the government can fund things, but then it takes these other people to do something, and I think at the moment, as a society, as a, as a nation of incredibly amazing people, we aren't doing our jobs. I'm not doing my job, Tom's not doing his job, you're not, you know, we're not doing our job on the ground level to make a, a difference and for me that's not okay as a person. So my my long term goal is to be able to really get involved in that and do something and I don't quite know, we're, we're talking to a psychologist and kind of aligning. So what we, strength isn't just physical, you know, you need to have that mental strength as well. We all go through mental health issues that's just part of life but then it's having that coping mechanism so what's our coping mechanisms we have to carry around this little imaginary toolbox of tools to allow us to be okay so mum dying that was a low point in my life losing a job um, worrying about money relationship issues all these things will cause you stress but then how do we then get better and wake up the next morning happy because again being happy is the single most important thing. That's it. If you can wake up happy every day, that's all. That's you're winning in life. It's not. It's not. Life isn't hard when you're happy. So if we can help to to push that throughout the country, even worldwide, I don't know. There's something there that I, I I'm really passionate about, and I could talk for hours and hours about it. And it's just something that really hits home with me. So if we can do something to improve the mental health crisis in Scotland and the UK then I think we're doing something very worthwhile. That's it. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, I think I'm doing well. <laughs> Who's your strongest of all time? Uh, I mean, for me it's close between obviously Brian and Sadrinas, but Sadrinas will obviously take it with the Arnold victories as well he's got, you know, so but I uh, what Sadrinas has done in this sport has been unbelievable. You know, the, like the Arnolds, especially the way he lifts those, that 205k log for four or five reps, he's unbelievable. And yeah, but him and Brian for me are, you know, nearly neck and neck. So. Hat for ready, who wins at the boxing match? Ready, Hall. How about you guys? <laughs> Poor old Thor, eh? Oh, he's a British crowd, it's a bit harsh. Anyone think Thor's going to win? Raise your hand. All right, security. <laughs> Get him out. Eddie, hands up. Hands up if you think it's going to last under three rounds. Yeah, I think it's going to go ugly early. I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, it'll be yeah, it'll be brutal, huh? fellas. Eddie, you're happy for. What yes. do you reckon? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Are you willing to give it a gamble? Eddie. Who would you bet Eddie. on? Eddie. Eddie. You bet on Eddie, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Very much, everybody. Put your hands together.